before i start today's video let me plug my digital store which i would want to sponsor most of my videos these days with my digital store i'm trying to make it a point where i take off ads from my obtrusive ads for my youtube videos so they can enjoy easy flow learning whenever it is you tap and want to learn a thing or two for my youtube channel i'm currently running a 30 percent discount if you open or if you jump on my website shop.jimmy-dash.com you can see the 30 percent discount the coupon code is black friday and it expires in the next seven days from now till 30th of november use it get 30 percent off any of my digital products so rush at it now let's just jump into today's video real quick i'm hoping i can quickly edit this and kind of explain as i go along to edit i've made a video of this advice one should have about lighting with respect to one lighting i'll link it up here make sure you go check it out learn a thing or two about shooting with one light yes this image was shot with one light i mean the whole setup i explained everything in that video what i quickly want to do i mean i've edited it i used my styles to edit it i'll show you that later on in the video but i quickly want to show you how i would go about editing photos in capture one maybe if you guys are interested let me know down in the comment section below i can or i will if there's much traction to this make a video on coloring in lightroom with respect to the same image if we take a look at this image this image was shot at the mac 5d mac 4 iso 200 shutter speed 1 over 200 f1.4 with a sigma at 85 mm lens the kind of glass you use and if i say glass i mean lens you use in capturing your images also influences the colors that are going to be registered together with the quality of light that is also going to register on your camera sensor so if you have a better cri from your light source it registers the colors very well together with an appropriate glass i'm sure a canon lens would have given something different so let's jump into some of the things i would do looking at this image it looks yellowish for me because of the jude's box and jude's material the lamp over here and the lamp at the top here this is also giving off yellowish vibe i mean it's a now warm region right so let's deal with the lighting issues first which i mostly tell people to do let me open the lights fall off just so my image is quite established with respect to exposure and all that i'll come to my adjustments up high dynamic sorry levels then i would open up my white right just to have that brightness back into my picture now i'm blowing out my outfit the only outstanding thing here that can draw your attention to the model is the outfit choice which initially wasn't what i was going for but it worked out perfectly so i'm going to reduce the highlights for that come back to the exposure and reduce the brightness a third bit what i do is whenever it is i add some white to my scene i reduce the brightness then i'm going to open up my shadows because i don't want those blacks crash it the next thing i would do i don't like too much sharpness in my image let's know what happened see yeah it's quite sharp for 1.4 image i don't need this sharpness being added by this application so i'm just going to remove it make it softer that's the goal because when i send it into photoshop i tend to add grains which perceive texture and all that so i don't keep sharpness in my image not at all now that's out of the way we've been able to expose this the way we want let's expose the face because the light was around here and it was far off here looking at the distance this part of the image which is her leg region had more light as compared to her face so i'm going to add a new empty layer hit on the radial filter draw a max on her face make sure it's feathered just on her face if i hold m on the keyboard you can tell 
currently the whole area is selected with respect with the exception of a face so i'm going to invert the mask let's rename this to facial facial mask then we expose her face all right give her some light on her face then a little bit of softness so i come into my luma open my shadows and drop my highlights that's how i'm able to introduce softness to light skin models then i add a tad bit contrast because we've opened up the contrast over here so let's see let's turn on the mask before and after let's reduce it a little bit then i think yeah we're looking at a not so visible adjustment being made back to the background now we are done with exposure settings or adjustment settings you can add the haze if you want currently i'm okay with the amount of blacks i have in my image so this is what i would roughly do if i have an image like this in capture one so if, if you're new to capture one this should serve as like a new or a welcome video i have a lot of playlists on capture one go watch that video or watch those videos understand what capture one is all about it's easy to use right the next thing i want to tackle is my white balance like i said this image looks too warm for me and warm comes with red, reds and yellows so i'm going to tackle the warmth with this kelvin balance right and keep it by default it's a 5300 i'm going to keep it around 5000 and keep the tint into the greens just so i can have my greens popping next thing i would want to do is to make sure my yellows are a little bit desaturated because they look too punchy for me and when i desaturate the yellows you can tell there are some reds in there so let's see let's reduce the reds also uh, all the way you can see what's happening but then it affects the skin and there's some reds on the background also let's take out purple hues things that i don't need in there then with the cyan of the with the outfit it looks more cyan that's towards the greens and the blues i'm going to reduce the lightness reduce the saturation because i don't want it too much too saturated then i make it more bluish right so more this goes down that goes down then the next thing i'll do come to advance hit on this i want the green to stand out this green looks looks like a green i don't want it, it looks more like a camel green a very off-putting camel green something i don't like to see in my images so let's make sure the selection is not affecting the skin so i'm going to move the segment here and i have a very good selection of the green background you can also tell some of the greens are in the jute material and that of the lamp or the lantern over the let me see if i can eliminate some more i think this should be fine so what i'm going to do is increase the saturation make sure it's more in the greens or warm greens if i warm it up i can cool it down yeah so let's do more like earth toned olive greens right next thing i'll do is to do this to make this green look pleasing I'm going to come into my color balance go into my shadows like i said this thing looks warm enough so together with my highlights i'm going to push them into the cool tone open up the blues in my shadows right same thing for my highlights also then we start toning them down the moment you do that you realize majority of that warmth that has been eliminated then we start bringing them down right reduce the saturation to the point where everything sits balanced what i do to the mid-tones because i've introduced warmth into the shadows and the highlights i assume the mid-tones as my skin tone so i'm going to warm it up and keep it there so take a look at this if i hold option on the keyboard and click on this 
or tap on this, you can see the effect it has on the backdrop. So to tackle the skin tones, I come into my color editor, hit on the color picker, tap on the skin. With respect to this model, right, there are times my lighting make her look more lighter. There are times my lighting make her look darker. It's a constant struggle between my creative decision to keep whatever it is I want to keep whenever it is I'm working on her skin. So what I want to do is to keep her in the lighter tone because she's light skinned, right? So let's do that. What then you see with the color selection also is that it has a lot of yellows. I'm going to keep some of the yellows in there. Or change the hue. If you want to see your hue change, check this two rectangular boxes down here. When I move it to the left, I'm adding more blues to the skin tones. When I move it to the right, I'm adding more yellows. So it has to be a fine line to where I want it. I'll increase the saturation a that bit. Then I'll add some lightness to it. So this is what we are looking at before and after before and after i feel it's too bright enough for me let's vignette it so let's bring back this light fall off right then come back into the adjustment tab add some dehaze dehaze is more like my contrast for me but it adds a third bit of color to your images all right back to color we are done with the first part of the color balance the next one I want to do is create another field layer adjustment. Rename this color grading one. Maybe there will be more. Color grading one. Come back to my color balance. Or first, let's go to my curve adjustment. Come into my blues. Create a creamy look. I want to add yellows into the highlights. I know I've added blues into the highlights, but I want to be able to control that so i'll hit i'll create a point curve over here drop this down the opposite of blue is yellow right so going this way will add blues to my highlights going this will add yellows to my highlights so i do that then i open up the shadows a tad bit right to add some blue so i'm, I'm looking for that creamy look on this image and this is how you create a creamy look Next thing I'll do is to come into my color balance tab, move this into the blues. You know what? Let's come back to this and move this more into the cyan instead to have. I always want to have cyan in my shadows because I would want to eliminate those reds in Canon cameras. So I'll come back to the CG one. This time around, I'm adding blues into my shadows. So I'll go all the way up. Then I see the effect it gives my image. Then I tone down the saturation as I come down. By lifting some colors in your shadows, you realize your blacks are lifted. So what I do is to reduce that with this. Add some contrast to this. Let's see what we can do if we add some greens into the highlights. Or some blues or some warmth or some reddish warmth i mean either one will work right so this is what we are currently looking at let me come back to the background layer go to advanced hits on this and let's see what color range we are in view selected color range let me add some color to that that green is supposed to stand out with a pop of color okay let's hit on the carpet also and see what we can do we want to create more separation so the yellows yeah there are a lot of yellows in this let's reduce the saturation of the yellows if we can go well not too much because i think it's affecting the skin and maybe open up the brightness so let's do a quick before and after before 
and after before and after one last thing before i leave i'm going to come into my levels and push the blacks i'm going to push my levels back so that i can have some blacks back in my image the outfit still looks greenish for me so i'm going to come back here the same advanced to hit on the outfit let's see view selected color range i have the outfit selected what i will do next is to reduce the saturation like i said i don't want it too punchy i'll make it more blue more blue than cyan okay so this is the before and this is the after before and after there's more you can do with capture one with respect to masking and all i think the new capture one has the option to have masking with ai and that's one advantage i think lightroom has over capture one because of masking with ai object selection subject selection skin selection and whatnot the best way to go about skin toning or skin uniformity is by using a slide over here. so if you move the hues in the direction you want you can unify that with these unify the saturation then you're good to go so if this skin tone is not in a direction you want of course this is just the color grading side for wanting to um, fix or adjust your image in capture one before you send them into photoshop with photoshop you have more room to do more and you have more control with selective coloring so what i did with the coloring i started with from start to finish let's recap in color editor and the basic you can see i touched that of the yellows let's see that of the greens if we reduce that of the greens will it will it affect us will it go in the direction we want okay they should do it they should do it so we touch the greens touch the cyan no blues touch this and that so with these ones it's just to remove them from the frame because these are not colors i would want to see when i am working on the images i want to work on right after that i think we did some adjustments with respect to exposure settings and all that then we did the facial marks just to have some lights on her face if you remember that's before and after then this is the color grading so this color grading kind of gave us the look we are going for and within the color grading if you remember i did something in the curve the creamy look in the curve that's pushing some yellows in the whites and raising the blues in the blacks then here in the color in our color balance we added some blues in the shadows some warmth in the highlights more greenish warmth on that note let me just move it towards reddish warmth Oh, we should stick with sand green in the highlights. I think this should also work. We could have played with this. Let me see. I mean, you never stop experimenting by reducing. Okay, we are not dealing with the dark skin, so I'm not going to touch that. So this is how I will color grade this image here in Capture One if I was moving sliders and wheels around to get a desired look at wanted then i'll jump into photoshop to do the more controlled one so this kind of sets the base for me what i did for the images i posted on my instagram which was way easier was to use my color styles especially the one i'm selling which is the tjd marker so if we come into my adjust and I open my layers to you, right? This is what you see. You see TJD X Pro and you see TJD Cream. Let me toggle them off, all the adjustments off, and you see what's happening. All right, so this is the background. Let me do it before and after for that of the background. 
Uh, so this is before and this is after. Before and after. What did I do? Let's go into color. White balance. Within the color, on the background, you realize my cyan has been added to. So this is the before and this is the after. Before and after. There's some cyan added. There's some um, saturation being added, exposure opening up, and you can see the lights fall off, opening up the scene. And the next thing to do is to add a TJD X Pro, and this is the look it gives, right? Before and after. It kind of desaturates quite a number of things. Then I added TJD Cream. So if you take a look at this, this is a 51, and that is a 36. This is the look it gave with the addition of TJD Crane. So you can stack up the styles that are being sold. Then if I turn on this mask, let's see what this, this is the facial mask to light up her face. So this is before that and after. Before, takes quite a while to do before and after. Then this mask is to reduce the light intensity as coming from the side. I wanted it to look like the light was centered on hair, not coming from one side. So I used a mask and reduced the exposure of the light that's coming from this direction. So in total, this is what's happening. This is before and after, before and after. And these are styles that are being sold on my website. So use the Black Friday deal, 30% off. You can get it if you've not already bought these packages. So I have TJD Marco, TJD Color Styles. They all work differently. I purposely made the marker for wedding photographers, but because it's versatile and it can work all around, I sometimes use them for my studio images. So I'm sure you might have seen this on my Instagram. This is where it started from. Then quite a number of Photoshop edits to give it this look. This is another image, right? Before and after. Before and after. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you subscribe before you leave. Leave a thumbs up and comment down in the comment section below if you would want to see me do a video about color grading one of these images in lightroom right so like i said this is something i would have done then i would have pushed it in the direction if i didn't have my pro my product or my presets or my cool styles i would have gone through the basic and all the headers of making sure this image is sitting right here in capture one before i jump into photoshop so to avoid all that to have a base to which you can work on make sure you make use of this black friday deal which is up till next week i'm not sure when i'm going to upload this video but i'm sure it's going to be up when the black friday deals are up so that you can enjoy them thank you once again and i'll see you in the next one peace